Yes. Good. I can't complain. Good. Let me see if I can uh, turn this up a little bit. So I can hear y'all in here. Oh, I guess it's high as it go. Oh, what I just do? Where? Say join. No. <laughs> Let's say save. Oh, save. Does that say close to the right? Yeah. Okay, that, uh, it says join there. Does that say join? There you go. Hey, I'm already doing too much. My bad. <laughs> I ain't no tech guy. You're good. Uh, Justin, I, I guess I'll start for you. Cam with the Curry Journal. Uh, UCF, they, they, they love to load the box and play a lot of man coverage on the outside on the, on the receivers. What kind of like, I mean, is, does that excite you guys as receivers knowing it's like, I mean, it's a one on one thing. You just got to beat your man and get open. Uh, me personally, I, I love man coverage. I like to exploit matchups using my size and my speed to get open and make plays for my team to, to create wins. But I feel like as a whole, as a group, what we have to offer, we have size, we have speed, and we have some very talented guys in our room. And I feel like we can definitely make that make man, make man press, uh, use it to our advantage. <clears throat> Is when when you guys watch UCF film, is that a lot of what you see? I know they make some other stuff in, but is that a lot of what you see? Is some yes, sir. Mostly, mostly man press. There's some. They're pretty physical guys. They like to play a lot with their hands uh, at the line and even down the field as well too. But they have a young secondary, and I feel like we can use some of what we have to kind of exploit those matchups. Like I said. Hey, Justin, I'm Matt McGavick with Sports Illustrated. How much of a confidence boost was it for you to get that 30-yard score in the game against EKU? And is is kind of the, the short yard in, in some of those tunnel screens, is that something you want to see more of in this offense moving forward? Almost definitely. I, I feel like <clears throat> always that's been a part of my game, just getting me the ball in short spaces and letting me work and do my thing, even before I was here at the University of Louisville. And most definitely it was a confidence boost because it kind of showed me that, like, I can do this. And, you know what I mean? All the hard work is finally playing off. And slowly but, sure, slowly but surely everything is adding up. And those good days that I've been stacking up are finally coming to the light. So just keep working and keep pushing, man, day in, day out. And I know through the first couple games it's been – I don't want to say I struggled to get the passing game going, but it's definitely been an adjustment like having all those young guys in there trying to get separation and, and create p plays for Malik. What has the, the conversation been in the wide receiver room just to try and keep everyone's spirits high and try and keep everyone's confidence up? Just knowing that we got to make plays, man. Like, that was a lot. Everybody's got a scope on us to try to make sure that we're handling our business. We got some big shoes to fill. Everybody keeps bringing up our tutu and Dez have left and who's going to be our guy next. But we definitely have talent in our room to make that happen and fill those shoes that were left. We just got to execute the play call, man. Every time that, whether it's a run, pass, anything, we just got to execute and make sure we're on top of our game and doing our business and being where we need to be for the quarterback. And, you know what I mean? Just playing for our other 10 guys out there. So that's all we talk about, man. Also, just if you do make a mistake, short term memory, keep it moving. We talk it up in the film room and move on. Like no need to ponder and dwell on anything. Just keep moving forward because once you get into those runs, say, for instance, you drop a ball. Now you're thinking about not dropping the ball or now you're messing up on this and messing up on that is you just got to stay consistent, man. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Hey, Justin, Michael McCammon from Cardinal Authority, kind of on that that note as well. Um, from my vantage point, uh, it seems like th th there's still a competition who could emerge as the as the first guys, and, and everybody seems like they're having their moments. Uh, does it still seem like a, a competition to you guys in practice? And if so, how's that going for you guys? Um, I don't say that we're competition, like a big competition between each other, but we are very, very competitive. So it's one of those things where it's like we push each other. If you're having a good day, and I'm lacking, or I'm, you know what I mean? We got guys in our room, the type of guys that'll pick each other up. We encourage each other to do better, encourage each other to put in the extra work so when the time comes, it shows. It's just one of those things where we gotta stay, like I said, even killed, never get too high, never getting too low, because I mean, everybody has those days to where you, you know me, down, you got this going on, that going on, even outside of football. And you just gotta gotta come with it every day. And we kind of push each other to do that. So, I mean, I agree that there is some competition in the room, but I feel like we don't like, it's no like competitive tension or anything like that. It's just one of those things we all want to see each other succeed and whatever we got to do to push you to that point, so be it. Hey, Justin, two, two questions for you real quick. Uh, one guy who's really been able to step up and finally show off his 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 talent, Josh, 
Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here. Are you're Josh's roommate? Yeah, that's my that's my best friend, bro. That's my brother. How, that's what I think. How long you guys been roommates? Uh, I've been roommates for Josh since day one, and I've known him before we even got to college. So this has been years and years of friendship, man. That's... That, and that, that's what I thought. I'm I'm curious your thought. Uh, obviously, Josh has been man. two ACL tears, and and obviously it just the whole thing of like a lot of times when people have that many injuries, they they want to quit football. Just what have you yeah. seen from Josh in his okay, career? So. I always and what's say, it like to see, see him kind of play now? One of the most Brazilian guys I've ever met, hands down, is Josh Johnson. I um, From watching him from since day one, I always admired his work ethic, and I always admired how whatever stone at him, he always finds a way to come out on top of it. And when he was going through those injuries, I felt like I was going through the injury with him because I'm with you every single day, all day long. You know what I mean? So that kind of puts an effect on me too and knowing how he feels and I know how hard he works and then those setbacks after setbacks after setbacks only set you up for a greater win in the, in the end. So just finally seeing Josh being able to showcase all that talent, man, and finally being able to put that out there and put that on on film and for the world to see, man, it makes me feel good, man. When he be catching the ball and playing ball, I'll be like, it's me, man. I Get me going, man. What's it say about him that he never, I mean, he didn't just pack it up and go home after two ACL tears? Resilient. Resilient as ever, hardworking, uh, militant-minded. I feel like he's one of those guys that if you need, that you need on in your room to succeed, you need hardworking guys that you can depend on, and he's very dependable. Always gonna be there, be at the right time, be at the right place, run his routes the right way, do everything the right way, even off the field. If you need somebody, you know what I mean. If you need him, can call him for anything. Very, very dependable guy, stand-up guy for sure. Much love, so much love for Josh, man. Just what what kind of things from the uh, Ole Miss game do you feel like you all learn that you can that that can help you against UCF? I say this uh, with the Ole Miss game, I feel like we kind of got caught up in the hype of it all a little bit and kind of got away from playing our football just a little bit. It's because you see when we came out in the second half, we are putting up scoring drives, whether it's three points or six points on the board. We're moving as soon as we come out of halftime. But I feel like we should start fast. And stay consistent, man. Like, no ups and waving, up and down. We got to be consistent and play Louisville football. I feel like in Louisville football, it's hard-nosed football. We're executing the calls, making plays when they're called, when our numbers are called, and just having fun while doing so, man. That's all. I thought like we just got kind of got caught up in the hype of things a little bit. And just when things don't go the right way, you got to respond immediately, not when it's too late, you know? Hey, Josh, one more for me. Uh, Matterfield mentioned earlier this Justin. week about how um, – not only the offensive line, but the wide receivers and the tight ends have, you know, kind of had up and ups and downs when it comes to blocking. How have, how have you guys in the wide receiver room kind of responded to that in practice and in film study? Uh, just work. Just going back to the fundamentals and working on technique. Coach Brew always preaches how important blocking is and how important the run game is for the pass game to develop. So just going back to technique things, just fundamentals, working on little stuff like footwork, hand placement, uh, hand replacement shooting our hands is little stuff you learn throughout the process of camp and up to now, just going back to those fundamentals and implementing them back again and mind tapping yourself to make sure that you're going through it on a daily basis and putting that into our, our game. Justin Hayes, Jody Dimling with Cardinal authority. Can you uh, kind of talk about what Malik, what you've seen week one to week two and, and, and maybe what Malik is doing to, to kind of help get other guys involved in the offense as far as receivers are concerned. Uh, I admire how Malik is becoming a becoming a, more of a leader, like when it comes to like being like a field general. So, say for instance, something goes wrong, goes wrong, and the plays, you know, at the end of plays, are we three and out? We come to the sideline, first guy to talk, first guy to encourage, first guy to give constructive criticism for improvement. You know, what I mean, everything, and then also with just getting more people involved. I mean. The more people you get involved, the more successful we can be for the win and less predictable we are as an offense. So I feel like he does a great job of spreading the ball around and shoot, just using his stuff as an asset as well, too. So I feel like I feel like he's doing a pretty good job at that, man. But most importantly, I admire how much of a leader he's become, even more of a leader he's become because he always has been. I'm, I admire the fact that his maturity is starting to show within like all of our groups on our offense. So Good. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, guys.